What's up everybody? Dan here with Dan and Sarah Makers and we are coming back at you with another Tool Tuesday. In this episode today we are going to talk about plumbing things up and as you can see I have on the table here levels. Levels are a pretty common way to plumb things up and when I mean plumb I'm talking about straight up and down or vertical. Level would be horizontal, plumb is vertical. Specifically today we're talking about plumbing things whether it's a wall, a column, a door frame, something like that. Basically we want to make sure something is straight up and down. Levels are really common to use to check plumb and level, but the issue with levels is they can be pretty expensive depending on which brand you get and then they can become very expensive when you get a level that's long enough to actually plumb something up. Now you can put them against a straight board or a piece of stud or an edge of plywood or something like that, but it's only going to be as accurate as the actual material that you're putting the level against. So like here, I have a very long level. This is a door, door length level, so it's slightly shorter than a typical door jam, but it's very expensive. So you can get a shorter level, which is less expensive, but it's not as accurate because you're not leveling or plumbing up against quite as long a piece or section of door or wall or something like that. So if you have a stud with variations, you're going to be inaccurately plumbing against a bow in the wood or something like that. Ideally with a wall, you're going to plumb from the sill plate all the way up to the top plate. And then of course, sometimes you'll get carpenters that just use their short torpedo level to check things, which is fine. You'll get fairly close, but you're not going to get really, really precise. You might be quarter inch out, three eighths of an inch out, something like that. So the idea is to get as long a measurement as you possibly can to get as accurate a setting or adjustment as you can. So unless you want to spend hundreds of dollars on a jam setting extendable level that goes from plate to plate, something like that, um, we have a different, much simpler, much older and less expensive option. Our simple option that we're going to talk about is a plumb bob. And in reality, this would be adequate and is the most simple, cheap type of plumb bob you could actually make. You probably have the materials at home to do this. It'll do its job for plumbing up a wall. And basically, it's just a piece of string, a heavy weight, and in this case, I've got a scrap of 2x4 broken that serves as a reel for my string line and plumb bob. This is honestly what you would need to plumb up a very tall wall or column or something like that. We would put a nail into the side of it, we would hang our string from that nail, let the nut or weight, whatever you happen to find, stop moving, and then you can measure your distance at the top of the string, bottom of the string, and adjust it until that measurement is equal and you know that your column or wall or whatever is plumb. This right here easily can be job site trash that you can just mill around in the dirt or on a slab or something and probably find all this stuff just laying around and create a plumb bob for free. Now with a nut or a weight on the bottom, you're not going to get a super precise point on the ground as a conventional plumb bob, but this is definitely a good start. Now as far as plumb bobs go, for a long time, I used a brass plumb bob, a 16 ounce brass plumb bob, and I just had it tied to a string wrapped around a door shim, basically. And that's what I used. And I believe I showed that to you in my uh, second carpentry tool video, the carpenter tote with all the tools inside. I have recently been exposed to some different types of reels or spools that store your string. Some of these in all my years I'd never been exposed to before, never seen before until I got around some other carpenters and they actually had them. So one type is called a Gammon Reel and Gammon is a brand name. This particular one is kind of an off, off brand, it's not an actual Gammon Reel, but it's a retractable spring loaded spool that has string inside. This one has about six feet. And this has a target on the front of it, as you can see, the orange and white grid or square. And that is for survey work. So as we hang it over a point, we can use our um, 
builder's level or total station or a theodolite, some sort of survey instrument to actually line off of this grid so we know we're directly over a set point on the ground. The plumb bob that I have attached to this is probably one of the most inexpensive um, factory made or mass produced type of plumb bob. It's just a steel, almost looks like a nut stock, like what would actually be cut into little wafers and then threaded for a nut. But it's just a steel weight with a hex shape and then it's got a hole drilled in the top that you can fish your st string through, tie a knot, and then pull it back, and it hangs. It's got a pretty crayon-shaped tip on it, so it's pretty blunt, but it does have a point, so when you're over a point on the ground, you can actually transfer that point or remove your plumb bob until you're over a set point. The next step up, in this case, is a real gammon reel, and this particular one has 12 feet of string in it, and again, it's a retractable, adjustable reel. It has a target on the front for survey. And then I have a 16 ounce plumb bob. It looks brass because it's brass plated, but in reality, this is a steel core plumb bob. The top of it unscrews and you run your string through it, tie a knot and then pull it tight and then screw it back in. And then the tip on this is actually replaceable if you need to replace it as if you dropped it onto a slab or a piece of steel or something like that and you bent the tip badly. So that's kind of the next step up. The one that I've, I'm most excited about that I'd never seen before is this and this is a Mullen plumb bob reel and it's basically, it's a small company out of Idaho. I don't know if they make any other tools. Um, they're kind of hard to find. You can actually find them on Amazon, but you can also search online and find them at some specialty tool places. And it's more or less kind of like a chalk line. And it's got an adjustable brake on it with a handle, a real handle that spins around. And you can tighten up the knob there and lock your plumb bob string off at pretty much any height you want. And the handle folds in. It has a hole in the top center, top dead center, with a slot grooved, so if you ever need to run a plumb line down from a string line that's been run on grid, you can actually put this on and hang this from a grid string line and transfer a mark straight down, which is a really cool feature. I actually had to use it at work the other day. And then it also has a spike on it with a driving point for a hammer, so you can drive this into the side of a post or something like that to hang it. It also has an optional magnet that it comes with that you can bolt onto the back of it. So if you're dealing with metal door frames, structural steel, um, garage door tracks, something of that nature, you can use that magnet. This has, I think this one came with, when I pulled it all out and I measured it, it came with approximately 38 feet of string line in it. So that's a pretty good amount. The plumb bob I have here is a 16 ounce real brass plumb bob, so it is all brass. It's got a replaceable point on it, and then again, the top unscrews and you run your string line through, knot it, pull it tight, and then screw it back into the top of the plumb bob. So that's a really neat, neat tool I hadn't been exposed to before. And then we have here, this is kind of the high-tech, cool-looking version of a plumb bob with a reel. This is a Tajima, a uh, Japanese company, obviously, that makes a lot of really cool innovative bits and pieces, whether it's chalk lines, tape measures, plumb bobs with plumb bob spools. And this, again, it's a retractable plumb bob reel, and it's got friction on it. And this one actually has a setting on it where you can adjust the amount of tension, depending on the mass or weight of the plumb bob that you have hanging from it, whether it's a one kilogram or thousand gram. Um, let's see, what do they have? A 700 gram and 400 gram weight settings. So that way it'll actually hold where you adjust it without it creeping or keep extending or keep retracting. So that's a really cool feature. This plumb bob itself, it's got a really sharp point and then it's got an interesting little kind of a plastic junction up at the top that's designed to supposedly deaden the plumb bob and keep it from shaking quite as long. So it kind of has a counter counteraction of that. It has a point here that you can drive out into wood and a driving head here. So you can drive it into wood and have it hang. It's got a magnet on the side here, which not only doubles 
sticking to something like a door frame or structural steel again, but you can take this steel plumb bob and stick it to the side and store it in that location. And then they have a small little rubber cap that actually snaps onto the tip of the plumb bob. The other feature that it has is this hook here is wide enough to hang over a 2x4 floor joist, something like that. So it's a pretty, pretty ingenious little system. Right now it is actually set so if you have it flush against a column, the plumb bob string is two inches exactly from your surface. So it's preset. And then it's got a small pin where you can actually hook the line and have it flush with the uh, face of the plumb bob reel. And that can be used in situations where you've got um, a top track on say a, a steel studs or something like that and you want to plumb down directly to the bottom track where you're not going to be pushing the plumb bob off to the side. So those are the different types of plumb bobs and plumb bob reels that you can find out there. These are a very old tool. They've got examples that go all the way back to basically the pyr pyramids with the Egyptians. Some of the 1800s, 1900s, early turn of the century, they actually had plumb bobs that looked very similar to this. You would pull the cap off and then there was another plug down inside that you would unscrew and then you would fill the center of the plumb bob, which is hollow, with liquid mercury which made them extremely heavy, much, much more dense or massive than, say, just a brass weight. And then you'd put the plug back in and then screw the end cap in. I've set up this horizontal string line that would basically, in most cases, represent a grid line or something like that on a job to show you how this mullen and then the gammon reels work when you've got a grid line stretched. So with this mullen, like I said, we can basically loosen it up and drop it down like it's a chalk line. And then we can actually tighten this screw up and set it. And then we've got this groove at top that we slide the string line over. And then we can let it down. And in this case, trying to get a string line tension tight enough to hold up a pound of weight can be kind of challenging without a lot of uh, sag in the line. But basically, if it isn't touching anything, it should be fine and still be on line. So I can loosen up this handle and lower my plumb bob down until it's pretty close to what I'm trying to hit at ground level. So whether it's for the corner of a foundation footing or a grid line intersection, something like that, or even an anchor bolt, this would be a good way of doing that. And just let the line settle, make sure nobody's tripping over it, hitting it, and this is a really good way to hang a plumb bob off a grid line. So these mullen, mullen reels are really nice in that situation. And then you just reel it up. It's fairly small, can fit in your nail bags if you need to. The next one are these gammon reels, and these, like I said, they're the spring-loaded with the target. They have a circle on the back, kind of a uh, tapered cone, and then two pins. And what that's used for is you retract enough string out of the box and then place it over your string line, put the string in between those two pins, and then spool your line around this hub. And that will actually give you a way to lock off over your string line and hang your plumb bob from it. You can adjust it for height if you need to. You can retract more line and basically just kind of work it in and out as needed and that will hang down and give you a target for where your plumb bob is. And that of course is really nice if you have a total station or theatolite where you've got the crosshairs lined up or even a builder's level and you can move it left and right and transfer that plumb mark straight down again for a corner of a foundation, anchor bolt, column, something like that. It's pretty nice in that it retracts without having to reel it up like the mullen. And again, even the brand name Gammon line does the same thing. It's got the two little brackets and then you can hang it off your string line. That way is backwards so you're seeing the back there. And then this would be 
the forwards so you see your target. So it's pretty pretty handy little system for actually creating your intersections on a suspended string line such as a grid. So this Tajima, as we uh, talked about earlier, it has this hook here that can actually be hooked over a 2x4 joist or stud, something like that, and will attach nicely. So that's kind of a neat feature there. And of course, your plumb bob retracts in and out, up and down. Here I've set the Tajima. I've used a small pin to mount it to a post here. And as you can see, it basically retracts and extends itself quite easily to the desired height. And it hangs parallel with the post. And basically, you just wait until it stop, stops moving. I like to just kind of guide it with my hands and kind of tap it a little bit. And that helps deaden the plumb bob and then you read the center of your string line or down at the point to uh, see how far the actual post is out of plumb. So if it's the same top, middle of the string, point of the plumb bob, you know you're pretty good. The one thing they do mention with these Tajimas is don't pull straight out to release it. They say to twist it. So that brings it out and it has a very, very small point so it doesn't do much damage to anything when you do use it. Again, they come with a protective cap, so put the cap on there, kind of snap it in place, and then you can store it just like that. The Mullen, again, it's got the little pin on the side here that you could also drive into wood and also hang the same way the Tajima does. So, all in all, really handy tools. Well, I hope you've enjoyed kind of a quick overview of the different types of plumb bobs and reels that are out there nowadays. Their uses in not only plumbing up a post or column wall, something like that, or uh, running off a string line to find grids or locations for corners of footings, foundations, anchor bolts, things like that. Um, I know that there are probably thousands of people out there that are better at this than me that have better knowledge, better ideas, better everything. But this is my take on it from what I've been exposed to over the years. This is a very old technology, as I said, and a lot of people may be wondering, why don't you just use a laser plumb? Why don't you use an extend -a level, something like that? Extendable levels are extremely expensive. They're prone to damage, especially on a job site where somebody else wants to borrow it. I've seen them get chomped in scissor lifts they were laid across the top and somebody went down on it and bent the level in half and you're out two, three, four hundred dollars depending on which one you get. And also with lasers, trying to catch a laser beam in full sunlight can be extremely difficult. If you're outside trying to plumb something up or even using a laser in a horizontal lining method for a foundation wall or something, lasers as good as they are, as fast as they are, and as nice as they are, and now that they are actually getting more affordable and cheaper by the week almost, they're still really, really hard to see in full sunlight. Part of that is because the laser classes, you have to have quote-unquote eye-safe lasers. They have to be limited to a certain power, and double AAA batteries, things like that, can only put out so much power. So plumb bobs are still a lot more durable. Uh, you can drop one of these on the ground and it's probably going to hang straight just like it did before it got dropped. They're a lot less expensive. They're a lot less uh, cumbersome. They don't take up nearly as much room or as much weight as some of the other options that are out there. So plumb bob, definitely something to have in your toolbox. You're not going to use it every day, chances are, but when you need it, you need it. So anyways, thanks for hanging out, watching this video, Tool Tuesday. Um, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. If you've got good ideas about how to use a plumb bob that I haven't touched on or have worked for you, feel free to leave it. If you've got really snarky comments, leave them if you want. We may or may not delete them. So anyways, until next time, this is Dan with Dan and Sarah Makers. Have a good one. Bye.